So, I don't usually do these news media type videos where I just talk about what's happening in the anime and manga community. But, there have been a couple of pretty interesting topics that have come out recently. So, first, let me get in proper attire. And let's talk about it. Also, most of these articles are coming from Twitter. And I'll be linking most of my sources either on screen or in the description below. Also, go follow my Twitter. So, last Friday... I talked about the One Piece live action series and how I thought it was the greatest live action anime adaptation of all time. Due to its massive success, season 2 must have gotten in a green lid already, right? Well, articles broke that they are still waiting for a couple of statistics to be shown before they could start working on it. However, we just got confirmation that they just finished the script for season 2 already. Following the One Piece timeline, that would mean season 2 would start with Logtown and end with the Alabasta arc. We will probably be getting it in a year or two, which I'm very excited to hear. Now, there are some reports that are saying that they aren't going to be starting production until the writer's strike is over. However, I don't know how accurate that statement is because it could just put pressure on people to be stopping the strike without any changes and we don't need that. But still, this is basically a green light for season 2, which has some really big shoes to fill from that first season. But let me know your thoughts on what season 2 will be featuring in the comments below. Now sadly, Shonen Jump is back cancelling up and coming manga series. On the chopping block this week is Fabricant 100 with chapter 36 being its finale and Tamaku Cinema, made by the creators of Food Wars, ending on their 21st chapter. However, it wasn't really a shock for most fans of these series as they could tell from the latest release that they were rushing to a finale. While there are some hardcore Fabricants and Tamaku fans out there, both volumes barely sold any volumes. And while both these series were popular in the West, a lot of Japanese readers just didn't enjoy it. This also seems to be the case for Do Retry, as they went from having their second boxing match in the series to fighting the final boss in the span of a few chapters. And now this isn't new for Shonen Jump. I've talked about a lot of recent cancellations in my future of Shonen Jump video. But at this point, it's just not a shock. The good news is, is that the creators of Temaku Cinema are releasing a new series in 2024 on Shonen Jump's sister company, Jump Giga. Also, a new Shonen Jump series called Mama Yu Yu has just released their first chapter, but what has me really hyped up is the Berserk manga is returning with a brand new arc coming September 22nd. And I know Berserk isn't a part of Shonen Jump, but it's still a really cool announcement. So, Annie Pelex Online Fest 2023 happened last week on September 10th, and they revealed a bunch of anime news like upcoming seasons, new series, and new movies so let's just go over them really quickly some of the new seasons announced were for michelle ruin kenshin and united up they also revealed the return of black butler blue exorcist you can watch their trailers on the crunchyroll youtube channel they announced new series getting anime adaptations like my new boss is goofy delico's nursery Demon Lord 2099, and the biggest surprise of the bunch, The Elusive Samurai. I really thought that The Elusive Samurai was going to get cancelled in the first couple of months of its release in Shonen Jump, but I'm glad that it's still going strong and now getting an anime. For movie news, they revealed two new Rascal Does Not Dream Of movies and another City Hunter movie. But in my opinion, the biggest reveal of this whole event was another trailer for the solo leveling anime that will be releasing in January of 2024. And I know this isn't a part of the event, but the same thing was announced the same day. But the final episode of AOT will be taking place November 4th. And I know I left out a couple of other announcements that they revealed, but you can always check out the rest of the list in the description below. So, one of the goofier stories I came across this week was about this mangaka named Hiroyuki. Hiroyuki is known for series like Girlfriend Girlfriend and Io Girl. I personally never knew any of his series existed until I heard about this new series that he's dropping named A Story About a Manga Artist Who Had Four Animated Works Went Into Depth of 50 Million Yen As a Result of Being Addicted to Wristwatches. Yes, that is the official title for the series. And it's based on a true story. According to Hiroyuki himself, he went into a 50 million yen debt, around 300,000 USD, due to his wristwatch addiction. 
he's hoping to pay off some of the debt with the books of sales and i'll be one of the people to buy this book you can even get a signed hand-drawn illustration from the author himself if you really want to help him out and now that I know this entire backstory of this situation, I really do want to get this book and just read how he even got into this situation. But what about you guys? Would you help him get out of his debt? Let me know in the comments below. And now for the main reason why I wanted to make this video, I wanted to talk about a situation that happened in Japan. And I want to emphasize the in Japan part. A 53-year-old YouTuber was arrested in May for violating the Copyright Act by uploading gameplay footage of the Steinsgate visual novel My Darling's Embrace. Not only that, but also uploaded edited footage of the Spy X Family anime with subtitles and narrations. Now, the copyright owners of Steinsgate stated that the suspect violated their guidelines by uploading an hour-long playthrough of their game. They state that this playthrough negatively impacted their sales by spoiling the game to their viewers. In August, the YouTuber admitted he knew he was violating the guidelines and kept doing it for financial gain. It was last Thursday when the court sentenced him to two years of prison, five years probation, and a fine of a million yen, or 6,700 USD. Now, if in the five years he behaves good, he would not have to face the two years in prison, but he will still have to pay the million yen fine. Now, as a content creator, especially in the anime realm, I know a lot about the copyright systems. And I also know that a lot of Japanese studios love to either take down or steal money from other YouTubers out there. It is not as big as a problem as the Sony Music label, but it's still a big problem. A big example is what happened to Totally Not Mark, where he got 150 videos blocked and removed from Toei Animations. Eventually, he got his videos back after a month, but still, without a huge platform, a smaller YouTuber like me would have a lot of trouble getting their videos back. Now, am I scared and shivering me timbers over the fact that I could get arrested for the videos that I'm dropping and making? No, of course not. This all happened in Japan. I live in the United States. And I know Japan has a very, very strict copyright rule. Or at least they're trying to enforce a very strict one. Now, on Twitter, the real main issue that a lot of people are mad about is due to the punishment itself with the five years of probation, two years in prison, and the million dollar fine. Because compared to the creator of Renault and Kenshin, who was convicted of possession of CP in November of 2017, his punishment was a fine of 200,000 yen, which is around 1,500 USD. By the way, this is over 100 DVDs of CP we're talking about, and he served zero jail time or even a fine as close to the 53-year-old YouTuber who was just uploading videos of him playing a video game. It's a very weird situation. For other countries, some crimes are just taken more seriously. We can't really change that, but it does just really, really suck. And that's it for the news this week. I really hope that nothing big is announced while I'm writing this script, but I really want to hear some of your guys' thoughts on any of these stories that I talked about. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. I'm not doing that anchor fish from SpongeBob, the breaking news. I'm not doing that shit. I don't get paid enough to do that.